Meanwhile, Russia is winning the battle on the airwaves, and they are doing it by broadcasting out conspiracy theories and propaganda. Anyone who's monitored what's been up on the air is well, well aware that this propaganda is offensive, is aimed at sowing confusion and undermining opposition to its aggression in Ukraine and elsewhere. But we are barely in the game of countering this with the facts. As I told the Secretary last week, I'd like to see more administration support for the effort Mr. Engel and I have undertaken to reform our international broadcasting. The Broadcasting Board of Governors is broken. If we can't begin to change minds, then the struggle over Ukraine today will become a generational struggle for the future of Eastern Europe. Ukraine's fate has security implications for well beyond its borders. Now, we passed this bill into the Senate last year. Uh, we were not able to bring it up and, and get it out of the Senate. We did not have the administration's support for it. Uh, but we have vetted this and have a great deal of support in this institution for getting back in, up on the air with Radio Free Europe, Radio Liberty type broadcasting that we did uh, years ago to great effect with a message that will get the truth effectively into Eastern Europe and into Russia. It is time for strong and, uh, and unwavering support of Ukraine. It's time for this right now. And many of these committee members on this committee, I believe, are concerned U.S. policy toward Ukraine may soon become too little too late. And I now turn to rank the ranking member for any opening remarks that Mr. Engel of New York might wish to make. You know, it was laughing when the, um, at, at that conference in Munich, uh, Madam Secretary, you and I both attended, uh, to hear the, the Russian uh, foreign minister denying uh, that Russian troops uh, were in Ukraine saying it was just Ukrainian rebels. Lies, lies, and more lies. I've spoken on the House floor, calling on our government to supply defensive weapons to Ukraine. So, Mr. Chairman, and I know you agree with me, Ukraine is not going to win a war against Russia, but it can impose a greater cost on Vladimir Putin's aggression and slow Russia's advances, and it has a chance to remain on its feet when all is said and done if it can impose a greater cost on Putin's aggression and slow Russia's advances. Yet for nearly a year, the administration, along with the vast majority of our European allies, has resisted providing such assistance. Now, to be sure, there are risks involved, but there are also risks in allowing Putin to continue his aggression in Ukraine and to threaten other peaceful neighbors on Russia's periphery. And if Russia's aggressive pressure on the West reach the frontiers of our NATO allies, the dangers to Europe increase tremendously, the dangers to the NATO alliance increase tremendously. In December, Congress unanimously passed the Ukraine Freedom Support Act. This legislation authorized the provision of lethal defensive aid. I was proud to lead House efforts to pass this legislation and happy that President Obama signed it, but I have dis been disappointed that the administration has not used any of the tools provided in this law. And on Russia's propaganda, we're working with the board Broadcast Board of Governors to ramp up efforts to counter lies with truth. We're also requesting more than $20 million in foreign assistance and public diplomacy funds for State Department programs to counter Russian propaganda. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Ranking Member, members of this committee, America's investment in Ukraine is about far more than protecting the choice of a single democratic European country. It's about protecting the rules-based system across Europe and globally. And it's about saying no to borders changed by force, to big countries intimidating small, and to demanding spheres of influence. It's also, as you said, Mr. Chairman and Mr. Ranking Member, about protecting the promise of a Europe whole, free, and at peace. I think, thank each of you, and I thank this committee as a whole, for its bipartisan support and commitment to these policies. Thank you very much. I look forward to your questions. Uh, lastly, um, per your uh, observation on the broadcasting, I just wanted to make the, the point in terms of the dysfunction. Yesterday, it was reported that the new CEO of the agency, Andy Lack, in terms of the BBG, 
is resigning his post after six weeks on the job. Now, we know, we know the problems that staff and others have had over at the BBG. We've heard from our former Secretary of State, Secretary Clinton, that the agency is defunct. It's defunct. Myself and Elliot Engel and other members of this committee put a lot of time and effort working with those who have a very real interest in reforming this, getting a consensus. That legislation is necessary to get this agency back up to the business that it did very well, um, you know, in the 1980s in terms of disseminating into information into Russia and into Eastern Europe. Uh, that legislation needs to have support from the administration, and I would just leave you with that, uh, that request, Ambassador. Uh, may I just quickly yes. respond? As, as right. you know, uh, as Secretary Kerry said, we do join you in supporting reform of the BBG. Uh, we're working with you on that. We have some differences slight with your proposed legislation. But I do want to do a shout out to BBG and its affiliates for the work that they have been doing over the last year to counter Russian propaganda and particularly to support broadcasting in Ukraine. They have devoted $22.6 million to Russian language programming, a uh, 104% increase over Maidan spending. They're now, RFERL and BOA have now launched a half hour new Russian language program current time which uh, helps fill the gap in clean news. It's being pulled down by broadcasters all across the periphery of Russia and parts of the Russian-speaking uh, populations in Ukraine are also receiving it. And they are now reaching about 6.6 uh, million, million viewers. So they have been good partners to us, and our budget request supports doing more together. We, we uh, follow that very closely. Good. And we, we uh, also are in consultation with those in theater about the effectiveness. And, uh, trust us when we say reforming the BBG is necessary at this time. We have to be able to take some decisive actions to get this back up and running the way it, it worked effectively in the 1980s. I'm going to go to Mr. Engel of New York, the ranking member of this committee, for his questions. Thank you.